Hello everybody, um, chapter 9 of Emil and the Detectives. Today's chapter is called The Detectives Assemble. As you may remember, they have gathered uh, in Nicholas Square to come up with a plan, I believe, but to make sure that they don't lose uh, the man they're chasing or following, they have uh, set up a, a lookout post and some scouts to pass on the message to them. So they're in uh, St Nicholas Square at the moment and they are um, coming up presumably with a plan, but let's find out. So chapter nine, the detectives assemble. There was a garden in Nicholas Square and the boys sat down there, some on two white benches and the rest on the low iron railings set around a patch of grass. They all looked very serious. The boy they called the professor had been longing for a chance like this. He took off his glasses and polished them with just the air his father wore when he was going to say something very important. His father was a judge. It's quite likely, he began, that we may have to split up on this job, so we ought to arrange for someone to remain at a telephone. Who's on the phone at the home? Twelve hands shot up. Who's got the most sensible parents. Me, I should think, said Vicar Tuesday. What's your phone number? Bavaria 0579. Right, here's a pencil and some paper. Crum, you tear up the paper into 20 slips and write Tuesday's phone number on each of them. Then hand them around. That will be our reporting station. Tuesday must be kept informed there all the time of what's going on where everyone is and what he's doing. Then anyone who wants information simply rings up Tuesday and gets it. But I shan't be at home, Tuesday exclaimed in horror. Yes, you will, said the professor. As soon as we've finished planning things, you'll go right home and stay there with your ear glued to the telephone. But, but I want to be there when the thief's caught, Tuesday protested. I'm small and I might be very useful. No, no, you go home and attend to the telephone, insisted the professor. That's, a u that's useful and very important. Oh, all right then, if you say so, Tuesday agreed reluctantly. Crumb handed round the slips of paper and each tucked his safely away in a pocket. One or two, who were very thorough, learned the number by heart at once. We ought to have sort of reserves to fall back on, said Emil. Of course, said the professor, anyone not actually taking part in the chase is to stay here in Nicholas Square and you'd better take it in turns to go home and say you may be out late. You might even say to you to, you might even say you were going to spend the night with a friend. That would make it easier if we have to keep going till morning. Emil, Gustav, Krum, you two Mittlers and I will be the front-line force. We'd better ring up our homes at once and say we'll be late. What else? Um, oh yes, Trout, you be the messenger. Go home with Tuesday and be ready to go at once to Nicholas Square if we send for you. Well, now we've got our detectives, reserves, a telephone service and a messenger. Those are the most important things for the moment, I think. Um, we shall need something to eat, Emil put in practically. Perhaps some of our chaps could go home and fetch some food. Great idea. Now, who lives nearest? asked the professor, looking them over. The Mittlers, Gerald, Frederick I, Brunner and Meyer. You run home and bring back what you can in the way of food. Those named ran off at once. You really are a lot of mugs, Trout exclaimed suddenly. You keep on talking about food and telephones and spending the night away from home and haven't said a word about how the thief is to be caught. You're a lot of gas bags. He couldn't think of a worse insult. Have you got any stuff for taking his footprint, fingerprints? Asked Peters. He had seen so many thrillers at the cinema that, he had, that it had rather gone to his head. Of course, he added, he may have worn rubber gloves and then no one will be able to prove anything against him. Don't be an idiot, said Trout. We'll just have to keep an eye on him and wait for a chance to sneak the money back. Oh no, that won't do at all, exclaimed the professor. 
If we take the money from him like that, we should be thieves ourselves. Don't be silly, said Trout. If a chap pinches something from me, I pinch it back, and that doesn't make me a thief. It does, declared the professor. I haven't heard such rot, growled Trout. I think the professor's right, said Emil. If I take something away from someone without his knowing, that would make me a thief. It wouldn't make any difference whose property it was to start with. Yes, that's perfectly true, said the professor. Now, for goodness sake, stop trying to be clever. We've arranged everything we can. We can't know yet just how we shall catch him. We shall have to make plans for that as we go along. But one thing I am certain, and that is, that he must give the money back of his own accord. We'd be fools to try to steal it from him. I don't see that, argued Licker Tuesday. How can I steal what's my own? What's mine must still be mine, even if he has got it has got into someone else's pocket. It's a bit difficult to explain, said the professor, and even grown-ups can't understand it. Morally speaking, you may be right, but in the eyes of the law, you'd be wrong. And if it came to the point, they'd find you guilty of theft. That's how it is, I'm afraid. Oh, have it your own way, said Trout, shrugging his shoulders. Do you know how to shadow a man properly? asked Peters. If you don't, he'll spot you as sure as eggs are eggs, and that would put the lid on everything. Yes, you will need some good sleuths, said Little Tuesday. That's why I thought I'd be so useful. I'm jolly good at shadowing people. I can bark too, he added with a grin, so you could, use, you could have used me as your police dog. I should have thought that would be just the way to draw attention to us in Berlin, said Emile impatiently. You ought to have a revolver, you know, Peters went on. Oh yes, we ought to have a gun, echoed one or two others. We ought not, returned the professor sharply. I bet the thief's got one, said Trout. This is a dangerous business, all right, said Emile. Anyone who's afraid had better go home to bed. Are you calling me a coward? Trout asked angrily, putting up his fists. Order, order, called the professor. Fight tomorrow if you want to, not now. You're behaving like a lot of, a lot of, a lot of kids. Well, that's what we are, said Tuesday, and they all laughed. I ought to send a few lines to my grandmother, Emil said rather anxiously. They'll be wondering where on earth I've got to. They might even go to the police. Could anyone take a note for me while we get on this get on with this business? They live at 15 Schumann Street. I'll go, said a boy named Brett. Write it quickly so that I get there before they lock up. I'll go by underground if someone will let me have the money. The professor gave him fourpence, enough to take him there and back. Emil borrowed paper and pencil and wrote, Dear Grandma, I expect you're wondering what's happened. I arrived in Berlin all right, but I can't come and see you yet because I've something very important to do first. I can't tell you about it now, but don't worry. As soon as everything's settled, I'll come straight over. I'm longing to see you. The boy who is bringing this letter is a friend and knows where I am, but he mustn't tell you because it has to be a secret at present. Love to all, your loving grandson, Emil. P.S. Mummy sent her love and I've got a bunch of flowers for you, which I'll bring as soon as possible. He folded the paper over and wrote the address on the other side. Don't tell any of them where I am or that or that I've lost the money, he told Brett. I'd get into terrible trouble if they ever knew. OK, said Brett, give it here. When I get back, I'll ring Tuesday and find out what's been happening. Then I'll go on and join the reserves. And off he ran. Meanwhile, the five boys had returned with packets of food. Gerald had bought a whole liver sausage, which he said his mother had given him, and all five had warned their families that they might be out late. Emil shared out sandwiches and kept the sausage for another time. Five more boys then ran home to ask permission to stay out, and two of them didn't come back. Presumably their parents wouldn't let them. We ought to have a password, the professor remembered suddenly so that Tuesday can be sure who we are when we telephone. We can't take risk having strangers butting in. Let's make it Emil. That's an easy password to remember. Little Tuesday went home with Trout, the messenger, who was still grumbling. Best of luck, he said as he went away. I say, ring up my father, said the professor. 
after them. Tell him I have very important business to attend to and that he wouldn't, won't worry about me being out late, he added to Emil. My word, parents in Berlin are jolly decent, said Emil. You needn't think twice. They're all like that, said Crumb, scratching behind his ear. On the whole, they're pretty reasonable, returned the professor. Most of them know that as long as they trust us, we aren't likely to deceive them. I promise my father never to do anything mean or dangerous, and as long as I abide by that, I can pretty much do as I like. My father's a good sort. He must be, said Emil. But this affair today may be dangerous. Then what? Ah, oh, well, said the professor with a shrug. In such cases, my father always says, think what you'd do if I were standing beside you. And I know that's what he'd say today. Now, let's be off. He stood up and addressed the rest of the boys. Now then, we detectives have to depend on all of you, he said. Means of communication are established. You all know Tuesday's number. I am going to leave you my share of the money because we have enough without it. There's one and eightpence left. Just count it, Gerald, will you? We've got all, we've all got food. Oh, and if anyone wants to go home, he'd better go. But mind, there, never, there must never be less than five here on duty. See to that too, will you, Gerald? Show what you're made of, boys, and we'll do our best to depend on that. If we need any help, Tuesday will send Trout to tell you. Any questions? No? Everything clear? Don't forget the password, Emil. Password Emil, they shouted, and so loudly it echoed round the square and made passers-by wonder what was going on. It was all so thrilling that Emil began to feel almost pleased that his money had been stolen. And that is the end of chapter 9. Chapter 10 is called The Quarry Goes to Ground. Uh, and that sounds quite an interesting ca um, chapter title. So it would seem they're developing a plan. It would seem that they've got their young boy Tuesday staying at home, looking after the phones. They've got some messengers. They've got some food. They've let their parents know they're going to be coming home late. So all in all, it would seem they're ready for the next stage of this adventure. So I hope you're enjoying the story. Come back tomorrow for chapter 10. The uh, quarry goes to ground. So stay at home, stay safe, and I'll be in touch with you again soon. Okay, bye bye everybody.